Welcome back to the rules of engagement. Apologize for a little bit of a long delay there. But now let's get on to the Marine King versus Seed game number two. This game is uh, pretty awesome. There's a couple things to talk about. One is the boy who cried wolf strategy. If you never know Aesop's Fables, it's a pretty famous one. And uh, Seed kind of utilizes that a bit in this game. We'll talk a bit about that. Defending with minimal units. So how to basically make a, a strong defense using uh, basically a bare minimum amount of units so you can use other resources in, in other manners. And then we're going to talk about taking advantage of a high-tech, low-econ Prodos. So a situation where they don't have a lot of money to produce a lot of basic gateway units, but they have some big, powerful units. How you can try to work around those and, and take advantage of that situation. So let's jump into game number one here. And uh, that's going to start off on Cloud... Or game number two, excuse me. This is game number two. We just saw game number one. Game number two on Cloud Kingdom. We'll talk a little bit about the Boy Who Cried Wolf strategy. So if you remember uh, last game, uh, Seed also used a lot of air units uh, hallucinated to scout, right? So he showed fake air units. And he's doing that again over here. So he's going to send out this hallucinated oracle. And the idea is that, okay, I can scout with it. And also, similar to last game, maybe he'll be scared and pull some workers. And I can do some economic damage as well, even with this, this fake unit just designed to scout. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite get there. The Marines cut it off. And now, you know, uh, basically what happened is Marine King saw that oracle coming into the edge of his base. He's like, oh no, oracle's coming to kill my workers. Get it, Marines. The Marines go in to kill, and he's like, okay. Okay, it was a fake. Breathe easy now, all right? And then going forward here, right, there's going to be, oops, there's going to be another one of these uh, the, these air units coming in here. It's going to be the Phoenix. It's going to come in again. And uh, the SCVs are, and Marines are going to be like, oh, no, there's an air unit coming in. What should we do here? What should we do? Let's go kill it. And so he's going to send some guys after it, try to take it out. And he's like, okay. Uh, the first one was a fake. This one's just flying around. Uh, it's probably a fake too, not that big a deal, right? And then he, he basically what, what's happening is Seed is priming Marine King to basically consider air units fake for, for the next time he sees it, right? Just like the boy who cried wolf kept crying wolf and there wasn't one there, just for attention, and then real wolf comes up and then boy gets eaten, right? So that's the strategy here. Seed actually is going to send in real uh, oracles, and Marine King's going to be like, oh, they're fake. They don't need to react, don't need to pull SCVs or anything. And then the real oracles can do a ton of damage. So he's not only getting scouting information with these hallucinations, right? He's seen double tech lab reactor, etc. Uh, he's seen the time to the starport. He knows it was, you know, expansion build. But uh, he's also prime Marine King to basically disbelieve air units in his base. So now these two oracles can come in, and uh, he's basically be caught by surprise, be laid on pulling the SCVs until at least a few of them go down. So now we're in a situation where this, this Oracle counter is basically going to do devastating damage because Marine King has nothing to defend it. But on the other hand, because he's uh, invested in these Oracles, uh, he doesn't have that many units to defend, right? A small gateway force, Marine King's got a, a fairly scary Marine Medevac Marauder Army here. And this is a situation where Seed needs to defend with minimal amount of units. And one of the key things here is knowing exactly the purpose of every defensive unit. So the Mothership Corps is poised between both bases and has enough energy for two Photon Overcharges. So it can easily get within range to cast Photon Overcharge on either Nexus, depending if it's a Doom Drop or a Frontal Assault. Now, worried about a Frontal Assault here, right? So for, if you're seeing, you're saying, okay, what if Marine King charges his units in straight into front, right? Um, what, what Seed's going to try to do in that situation is he's going to try to trap a few of the units with Force Fields, right? Uh, basically, right in this line here. This line right here is a line where it only takes three force fields. And if he can cut off a few units with force fields, a photon overcharge on this Nexus, and the Nexus range lines up perfectly, he can he can defend a large force with just one, two, three sentries and that photon overcharge. So the front direction is pretty easy to defend until there's a whole ton of medevacs, and the, and the medevacs are willing to go into the photon overcharge to try to drop units on the other side of the force fields. So uh, the goal here is to land a force field right here, basically, right here, and right here and then the Photon Overcharge, and you cut off a few units on the right side, but leave most units on the left, just keep shading off units a few at a time. And if you notice it, Seed has a ton of energy on these sentries, so he can do that multiple times, double Photon Overcharges. He, he can defend this spot very easily. The danger, though, going forward is going to be the Doom Drop in the main, because that's where Force Fields aren't quite as useful. Photon Overcharge is still going to be useful, but the Force Fields, not quite as much. So he's got to be careful going forward. The front attack is easy to defend, the main is going to be harder. So Photon Overcharge goes down, and he was ready. If Marine King stepped past this invisible line right here, that's when the Force Fields would have been laid down and knocked out a couple of his units. 
He's got to worry about the Doom Drop, though, and that's where a decent Stalker count is key. Ideally, the Stalkers and the Zealots would not have been at the front because all you need is the Sentries and the Photon Overcharge, and you should be okay. Uh, maybe keep some of the Zealots at the front a little bit in case he tries to drop over the Force Fields, but with the Photon Overcharge, you probably will be okay at, at defending that, at least when there's only two Medivacs. The drop in the main is a little bit trickier. Warp in, though, and a reaction should be fine. And, of course, the Photon Overcharge can still hold whatever units are at the front. And Marinki realizes that uh, it's going to be tricky to, to basically ferry all of his units up in the main with just two Medivacs. So uh, when, when C moves here, he says, you know what, maybe it's better to, to take the low ground. C cuts a couple units off force fields, uh, and then Marinki has to basically evacuate. So great defense so far by C. But notice that he warped in more Zealots at the, high, at, at the front right here. And this is the situation that's tricky because uh, the front, like I mentioned, it's easy to defend. Easy to defend. The, the hard part is the drop in the main. And that's where I think you need a higher Stalker count so you can leave all those Stalkers in the front here uh, up on the high ground and they can uh, help deter those drops by taking out those Medivacs. Meanwhile, while he's done this great defense with just a few units, what's happened is these Oracles, in fact, let's actually go back and take a look at some of these guys just a little bit and see how quickly these guys can rack up the kills. While he's been doing that great defense, simultaneously, he's got these Oracles into Marine King's main, and they're just racking up kill after kill after kill, doing massive, massive damage to Marine King's economy, of course. A little bit slow in chasing SUVs because he's busy worrying about the front, but then quickly uh, gets back on it. A few Marines try to stop, but there's, uh, there's two Oracles versus Marines rallying out one, two, three at a time. The Marines don't really stand much of a chance as they just get melted before they can really do too much damage to the Oracles. One Oracle uh, getting low on life, but the other one's still getting more and more and more kills. We can see here, one's up to seven. Uh, it's going to even get higher, although they being distracted by Marauder. But there, the other Oracle is, is up to 12 kills now. They're going to keep doing more damage until they run out of energy, which actually one of them already has. The other one uh, is about to run out of energy. So, again, attacking the front. Right, let's actually rewind this just a second again. Uh, with with the Oracle damage, all Seed has to do is defend. But remember, he's got fairly minimal units to defend because he's invested in the air attack. The other thing that's very important when you defend with minimal units is let's take a look at Seed's vision, right? Throughout all this, look at his vision on the minimap here, and uh, we can notice a couple key things. And the key things are going to be, look at these these spots on the minimap, these three spots over here, basically all around his base. Right? And if we take a look at that, what we can do is we can see that one of these spots is going to be an observer. Right? He has an observer checking the front path. And then he also has an observer checking uh, a drop into the main. And then in case there's a drop into the main over here at the very top, he's got that phoenix there over the top. Why is that a phoenix instead of a third observer? Just production time. Right? He didn't have time to breach a lot of observers. He had a stargate. Use the phoenix instead. I mean, it's, it also damaged medevacs a bit. It's not going to totally shut down the drop. But it's, it's a little more expensive than Observer, but easier to produce given the constraints of having that star get much faster than, uh, and, and also devoting to the Oracles early, only having two Observers out right now. So the scouting is key so he can, uh, if we notice back in his base, he doesn't have to keep any units back here, any cannons or anything. Just worry about the front attack, and then, of course, he can react uh, if he spots a, a, a drop out, plenty of reaction time. So again, the Photon Overcharge here. Unfortunately, this time, uh, the sentries were a little bit out of position, so it was un unable to get that key money triple force field in this choke. And what happens is uh, he g he's able to still get a couple units, but not as many as he would like, and Marine King very fast. Photon Overcharge not quite targeting the Medivacs to, to punish that move. Uh, so the Medivacs are still at full life, and Marine King's able to get away uh, out of there without a problem. Now going forward, right, he just used his second Photon Overcharge on his natural, right? Uh, he had two, one of them were uh, timed out, laid down that second photon overcharge. So now he has no photon overcharge to put in the main nexus. Marine King jumps right into the main, and this is the problem where you need to have a higher stalker count, uh, because as soon as they drop into your main, you have this problem where if you have slow zealots without charge, I mean, uh, charge is on the way, but because you open Stargate, it's a little bit later than, than ideally it would be. The zealots have a really hard time getting to the Bioforce, especially when they have to try to get walk through the Prodoss base. I mean, the force fields actually here are, are pretty much perfect, but uh, the Zealots are the bulk of his army, and they were unable to really close the gap and do the damage he needed to do. And Marine King's getting a great trade here, equalizing the worker damage by forcing Seed to pull off some workers to help his army just in order to, to stay alive here. So the defense w w was great at first with the minimal, m minimal units at the front, but a few more stalkers in the composition, you could have afforded it with that gas count. It's kind of scary to try to beat a bio composition with stalkers because Stalkers do very low damage, but 
Uh, with Force Fields and, and uh, Mothership Core, it might be your, your best bet, at least until you can get closer to getting that charge upgrade done. So going forward here, the situation we're in is if you look at uh, the economics of the situation, Marine King has a better economy. I mean, he's lost, uh, you know, he's lost 20 workers, but he's killed 13, and, uh, and uh, you know, Seed was cutting workers a little bit more than Marine King to try to warp enough units to defend us. But Marine King just has basic units with uh, limited upgrades. Oh, I think he's at 1-1, one, one, right? So he's at 1-1. One, one. Uh, Seed, once this upgrade finishes, will be slightly favored in upgrades. Two armor is better than 1-1 one, one in, in this situation. And he's got Archons out, and he has Stargate units out. So Seed has a lot of these heavy tech units. He's got the, the Stargate units out, he's got Archons out, and Marine King just has the basic units. But Marine King has the better economy, and, and, and that's when he's in a situation where the better economy is going to translate into an army superiority. Right now, the armies are equal in size, but going forward, Marine King's going to have a stronger army just because he can rally more units. The disadvantage is, of course, Seed's army has these power hitting units. The Archons with two armor Zealots in front, Zealots now have charge. It's going to be difficult to beat that in a straight on fight without the 2 2 upgrades that Terran really wants to have approaching the 14 minute mark. So, the technique he's going to use is that knowing that these higher tech units like Archons and Oracles, do devastating damage to bow units, but they also are very fragile, so you need a lot of zealots in front of them to tank. So what you can do here, uh, if you watch the way Marine King plays, knowing that these units are only effective with tanking units in front of them, also knowing that in this situation, um, Seed doesn't have enough economy because of the way the early game worked out to crank out a ton of zealots. He has enough zealots to cover basically one section of his high-tech units. But all Marine King has to do is start spreading the fight out. And yes, Seed has an army that's very strong in one location, but as the fight spread out, all of a sudden, at least one or two of those locations, Seed's going to either have to fight without his high-tech units, uh, in which case Marine King can trade well, or if he sends a high-tech unit like an Oracle or an Archon, it's not going to have the, the units to protect it, and so it can be focused down very, very easily. So if you notice what Marine King's doing, he first drops over in the back of the natural, right? Uh, in fact, let's look at this from Marine King's point of view. Uh, we can see here, he's got the army in the back of the natural, and he's also massing in front of the natural right here with the good force. So what he wants to do is he wants to try to attack from multiple angles. And going forward, what he's going to do, uh, he's going to use this army in the back of the natural just to, to identify where Seed's army was. That was the point of this drop, trying to figure out where Seed's army was. And now that he knows it's all natural, he's going to use this army. He knows this army's not going to beat Seed's army here, right? But all he's trying to do is, is basically... Bring, it, bring its attention over here. And any attention you can draw over here and, and distract it, this drop can go into main. And this drop is normally not a big deal for Seed to defend. He, uh, normally, it's, you can just split your army up. But the army Seed has is actually, you cannot split it up. If Seed's army is split up, all of a sudden it becomes much, much, much weaker because the Zealots can't do anything on their own. They can't kill the units because there's medevacs there. The Archon and the Oracles can kill the units but they'll die instantly if there's no zealots there. Uh, and of course, Guardian Shield and Sentries are essential as well. So there's no way C can split up this army. Uh, and he, what he's got to do is he's got to use some zealot warpins over to deal with this medevac in an inefficient manner, which means there's less zealots here at the front, which is going to mean his key tech units, the Oracles and Archons, are going to be a little bit more dangerous. Notice he's luring away the scary army again. And then the drop here is, is using more and more zealot warpins. And then, yes, yeah, Cita has a ton of warp gates, right? But he doesn't have the economy. Look at this, only 40 workers to fund them all. So he won't have any warpins left when this final army comes in here into the natural uh, and, and basically goes in and wrecks havoc. And the key decision here that a lot of players, I mean, this is actually, we'll, we'll play this out a little bit more and see, uh, you know, once he can just focus down this nexus, that's going to be game over because Seed has now lost his natural and the Marine King's even got a third base on the way. But even without a third base, Seed would have no chance going forward to maintain the, the production and keep up with the Marine King. So, this is where the game's over. But the one key decision I want to point out here is if we jump back, notice how um, as he's, as he's uh, microing this army here, right? A lot of Terran players, what they do, this army that they're, that they're building up right here, they would say, oh, I should just go group everything and fight this Protoss force. But if you think about it, could, could these forces combine, right? Five Marauders, four Marines, uh, and two Medivacs combined with this small unit here they would still lose to this army, right? Seed's got two armor upgrades. Uh, the sentries can even actually do decent on their own with those upgrades. There's still an Archon there, and there's double Oracles with, you know, combined over 30 kills. So 
even combined, these two tier armies would lose to this Protoss army. But knowing that Seed cannot afford to split up this army because it's so... The way Protoss works, it's so uh, important that they all stay together. All Marine King has to do is he has to pull these units back. And then, of course, this backup army can come in here and, 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 and get the kill. And, of course, if, if Seed's army backs up again, the Marines and Marauders with their greater range get a bunch of free hits. So uh, I think Seed felt compelled to chase down and, and kill that army. Of course, that left a natural open, wide open. Marine King gets the kill and, of course, goes on to take game number two. The important thing there was understanding the weakness of your opponent when they have very scary units, but not a lot of economy to produce a lot of units. Uh, if it's it's kind of like a situation where if they have their money spread out in a bunch of basic units, they can split that army into two, three different ways and uh, just as well as you can. But if, for example, they have like one or two Archons, you can't split an Archon two ways, right? He can only be in one location. You can split up five, six elves, three here, three there, one Archon can't be split up. So Marine can use the knowledge that, you know what, he's got a scary army, a lot of powerful high-tech units, but they can't be ever at once because they, they're, you know, there's just one or two, three units that are key to that army. Those three units can only be at one place at a time to really uh, split, spread, out, pre spread his opponent out, excuse me, and, and get that Nexus snipe, and that's what led him to the victory in that game, even though he took so much damage from his Oracles uh, when Seed pulled that, you know, Boyo Cried Wolf strategy, snuck him in there, uh, and, and, and did crippling damage. So I hope you guys enjoyed some of the tactics utilized in this game. You can try them out at home, especially that hallucinated air into real air. It's a great mind game. Uh, Seed is the master mind game. It's one of the, one of the, probably one of the strongest mind game Predators players out there. Uh, very, very effective. Use that at home. And also as a Terran, if you cripple your opponent's economy, try to spread them out because they're going to have a hard time uh, hitting the warp ins in all those locations to defend with a smaller economy. Take a short break and then go on to what I found was the most interesting, intense match of the series. Game number four.